Tell her about the forecast today. Today's forecast, a lot of sunshine, blue skies, marine clouds. Just a perfect day to go outside and relax. That's your forecast. We'll be right back. Yeah, sunny days, sunny days, sunny days. No clouds in the sky, but again, away feels like it's been a freaking day. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another fabulous episode of The Social Beaches with um, Kelly. <laughs> And Carolyn. I'm not supposed to do it that way. I'm Carolyn Smith. <laughs> and I'm Kelly Bowley. <laughs> <laughs> We're having fun today. Intro. Yeah, thanks for the intro. We um, we sell real estate uh, on the Space Coast. That's uh, Brevard County and also Indian River County, which is the Treasure Coast. Melbourne, Cocoa Beach, all the way to Mims, all the way to Palm Bay, Melbourne Beach, and into Vero Beach. So if you're looking for real estate or you're looking to sell real estate, we would love to hear from you. And today we're going to talk about leasing. Um, We thought about that because I just had a client who reached out to me and they're looking to, well, they're relocating for his work. It's a couple. And they have decided that they want to build new. They're set on building new. And so they said, we need to lease a property for a couple years while we find the the property that we want to build and build it, which is great. But they also have two almost 50 pound dogs. Yeah, big dogs. Big dogs. And, you know, very, very difficult to find a rental that will accept one large dog, much less two large dogs. Right. And so Kelly and I wanted to talk about some of the things to keep in mind when leasing a property and why, if you can purchase it makes it, more sense. It makes more sense. It really does. And so I, I'll start off with sort of saying the pet thing that we were talking about is that we have a rental shortage now. There's yes. more apartments now. So you can rent in an apartment and they usually will allow one or two pets. Right. Um, so if you're interested in an apartment style living, um, that might be an option. But if you want a private rental, very difficult to find someone who will it's allow pets at just- all. Yeah. And not just the dogs. I mean, you know, you might see one small dog allowed, which defines small, right? Right. And then you'll see some with absolutely no cats. And, you know, cats are relatively easy. They're like very low maintenance, but people have allergies, these homeowners, you know, and they recognize that if there's a home with carpet in it, you can't get the dander out of that carpet without taking the carpet out. So Mm -hmm. they recognize this. And it's not that, honestly, let's be real. The kids are probably going to do more damage than the pets to the house. Um, Or just us in general with our, with our regular living habits and things can do more damage. But you know, the pets alone, it's really hard to find a landlord who's willing to work with that. Um, Mm -hmm. And I know I've had to rent before with boxers and they're large dogs and it was a big challenge. And the crazy thing is, I mean, Small dogs are often, they're more yippy. Oh, yeah. They sometimes will scratch <laughs> more um, and they can cause just as much. I mean, they have smaller bladders. I hate mm-hmm. to say it, but like if you're oh. at work during the day, they're, they're having accidents in that oh, yeah. house oh, where gosh. the bigger Chris's dog can hold it better. Apartment that she just <laughs> moved out of. I mean, she's got two little miniature dachshunds yeah. and they're so sweet, but they're very yippy. So she got a couple noise complaints while she yeah. lived there because they were barking while she was gone. Um, the carpet, um, one of them ate a piece of carpet. So she had to go like take a clipping from the closet and found her a little hack to kind of glue it back down. We had to have the carpet shampooed. She replaced the blinds like three times because the dogs Mm -hmm. ate the blinds. You know, they've even visited me and one of them found like a slight little dent in the drywall under the window and decided I'm going to make that worse. And she ate a hole in the wall at my house. So, you know, it, animals can do some damage and I love them dearly, you know, my own and hers, but You know, it's, it's a problem when you're renting and it can be, you know, this, I get, you get a a pet deposit for most places, but that doesn't always. And it's non-refundable. It is non-refundable typically. So be prepared. And it doesn't always cover the damage that your pet does. Mm -hmm. So if they are doing more damage than that $350 or the $500 or the $250 or whatever it is. Um, and something new that I've been noticing too is some places will charge a monthly pet rent on top of that deposit. Oh, really? She pays that where she's at now. So she wow. had to pay an initial deposit for each animal. And then each month there's a set pet rent that she pays to keep them there. Oh, on top of her regular rent. I mean, think about it. It's genius. People know that we're not going to part with our animals. Right. How can we get more money out of you? Right. We're going to charge a fee. It's, can you imagine if they charge you like per child, <laughs> like human child? That's probably yeah. against the law, but they can do whatever they want with the pets. Right. And the other thing is people have like their emotional support animals, their ESAs, oh. and you know, the tricky rules of getting a private landlord to comply with the law for stuff like that. Because if you think about it, you're putting in an application application. You're disclosing on your application mm-hmm. that you have an animal and you might be saying that it's a service animal or it's an ESA. There's a difference between the two. Um, 
But if the landlord has another application and the credit and background looks good and they don't have any of those animals, who do you think yeah, they're going to choose? Exactly. And they've made it, um, the state has made it more difficult to have the true paperwork yeah. that waves it. I mean, you can't just like get on the internet anymore and right. just fill out a form and, yeah. and get something in the mail. And I think one of the biggest things is you have to understand that that landlord can decide to sell. At and, any time. At any time. And so your lease is your lease trumps everything. Your lease will transfer to the new owner, but the new owner may not be interested in being a landlord or they may want a lot higher rent or whatever. So there's no security in renting. There isn't. There's not security. So although you may say, well, it's, you know, someone else is handling the maintenance, someone else, unless you're in like an apartment complex, it's not going to be sold. Right. If you're in a private rental, it, we've seen this happen time and time again. And then you get what? 60 days notice or something that you have to be out and you have to find a place. I can remember when I was first a single mom and I found a place to rent and I had to give them a big deposit because as a newly single mom that did not have a job, I had yeah. terrible credit to give them a very large lump sum of money yes. to be able to like accept me first of all. And I can remember I was sitting at my office and I was about maybe nine months into my one year lease and they called me and said, the owner has decided to sell. Oh, and see? so you'll have to oh. vacate at the end of your lease. If you find a place to go sooner, we'll let you out. And I just like literally crumbled because I'm like, where am I going to go? It was so cheap. It was a brand new house. I was only paying like a thousand dollars a month. Oh, and this goodness. is of course way back a long time yes. ago. Um, but I'm just like, what am I going to do? You know, cause I found somebody who was willing to work with me. It was a nice home, you know, in a decent neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so that sucked. I did mm -hmm. find another place, but it was just awful. So there it's is terrifying. no security. Yeah. yeah, it's terrifying. And if you want like your kids go to school in that school district or whatever mm -hmm. it is, you need to stay in that area. We do have a rental shortage right now. And again, there's apartments, but if you want to be in a house with a yard or a townhouse right. or garage or whatever, those things, yeah. I don't know, it, you know, when you can buy and we just always say, you know, look at it. Don't just assume that you can't buy look, have us help you, you know, we'll set you up with a mortgage person. They can run your numbers. You might be surprised. I know that happened to me when I was down here in Florida, we rented, um, let's see, we rented one place in Indy Atlantic for, I think we were there three years yeah. and we were just getting tired of the landlord not fixing things. Yes. Imagine that. I literally had like the ceilings looked like they were about to cave in, you know, all of the seam lines mm -hmm. were showing and they were sagging in places and I'm just like, I am not, I'm not feeling it anymore. So let's go look for another rental. And God bless this realtor. She's still a realtor here today. Yeah. Um, she answered her phone. She took me to see so many rentals, so many. And they were all awful. Like yeah. one, I remember pulling up and there was like 20 cans of Raid roach spray on the curb. Oh, God. And I was like, we don't even need to go into that one. I'm good. And I looked everywhere. I was not like, oh, I have to be in this area. I have to be in. I, I didn't care anywhere. We would have right. gone. And then I looked at her one day and I was like, should we just buy something? She goes, well, can you buy? And I'm like, I have no idea. And she's like, go talk to this lady. So she sent me in there and five minutes later I had a pre-approval. I'm like, oh my God, we're going to buy a house. Oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> it was, it's yeah. It's very exciting. And maintenance is a big thing because private landlords, I remember back when I had, I had graduated from college and I moved to South Florida and I rented this beautiful condo this beautiful condo and the AC went out mm. and then the fridge went out and neither one of those did they fix quickly. So I'm in Florida in South Florida and it's a thousand degrees and it's a <laughs> condo. It's not like you can open a lot of windows, air no. things out, whatever. And it wasn't also was, I was a single woman by myself, so I don't want, you know, access. Oh, right. yeah. Um, and I couldn't get them to fix the AC. They're like, oh, someone's coming. They were in no hurry. Mm -hmm. And your rights, you know, you do have rights, but they're limited. And the yeah. same thing when the fridge went out. I mean, all my food got ruined. Um, they wouldn't come replace it. They were trying to get someone to fix it. Meanwhile, I have no food. Right. You know, so yeah, yeah. maintenance is not fun. Yeah, that's true. And the other thing is like they can, uh, granted, they have to give you notice, but they can come in whenever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if they have to access it for a repair or some sort of maintenance that they're doing, or they just want to, and there's some landlords that have deep respect for their tenants that yes. do give ample notice. And then there's others that really just don't care. They're like, that's my house. I can go when I want. And, and it matters, I think, who... Um you know, is your property professionally managed That's by a helpful. professional management company? That is definitely helpful. Uh, if you, if you get a rental and you, you're renting with someone who's never, 
never rented property or basically operates, you know, I hate to say like a slumlord, but they, they don't care. Right. They don't care about you. They don't care about your things. They don't care about your rights. Right. They don't care about anything. Yeah. Um, and the professional management companies usually are a little, a lot better. Yes. A lot better. But I will still caution you if you are going to rent, whether it's from a private owner or a professional management company, take photos of everything when you move in and document every defect. And I'm talking like a loose doorknob. I'm talking about like the landscaping in the backyard. Mm -hmm. I remember when we moved out of the one, when we were going to go buy our house, um, we had documented, we had a roommate when we first moved in who had been there, done that. And I'm like, this is crazy. Why is he taking all these pictures? Why do I have like a spreadsheet of like defects of this house? Like this is nuts, but I saved it. Yeah. And I'm so glad I did because they tried to come after our entire security deposit. Wow. And I was like, oh no. Mm -mm. And I told them, I said, I will pay an attorney like double what I paid you for that security deposit just for you to not get that money. Like that's ridiculous. So I sent them all the proof. And the mm -hmm. only thing they ended up keeping was $20 for an air filter. Because when I changed it, I didn't write the date on it. Oh my god! Because who does that? Yes. Well, guess who does that now? I still do it in my do house really? that I own. I write the date on it when I put the new one in. Oh, it's not a bad idea. Actually. It isn't. <laughs> I mean, it reminds you when you take it yeah. out. Like, oh, it's been two months since yeah. I did that. Okay. But yeah, that was the only thing they were able to take because we had oh. such good documentation. I remember I dated this guy years ago and he bought rose bushes and he planted them at the rental house. Mm -hmm. And then they were beautiful rose bushes. So when he moved out, he dug up the rose bushes and took the, and they, they kept part of his security deposit saying, you took our rose bushes, <laughs> but he had no proof <laughs> that he had planted that he them. had planted them and put them in. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So you do have to really document yeah, everything. Yeah, you really do. Take pictures. And uh, you know, at the showings at the end of the lease. Uh, that's yeah. for us when we're trying to show something that's tenant occupied, it can be difficult. And there's sometimes where tensions are very high because sometimes mm -hmm. these tenants have not been given ample notice by the owners right. that they have decided to sell. And so, yeah, the tenants are very, very upset and they don't clean up and they, they have no interest in. Sometimes they just don't even <laughs> allow the showings. They're like, no, yeah. that won't work for me because, yeah. you know, Technically, do they have to? It's, I guess it depends on how their lease I think is written. It's in the lease, the standard lease that they have to allow show. Usually, that they have to allow showings a certain number of days prior to the end. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. So it can be a little tricky. Or if you need to exit the lease early, let's say your job transfers you, or you have some situation that, or you decide to buy a house and you find the perfect home or whatever. What is your exit clause right. on your lease? What I would always you encourage terminate? you to do that early termination clause <clears throat> Two in months. your lease. Always select that. My daughter was yeah. just doing her lease. She goes, do I pick that? I said, always never ask me again. Just always do that. Yeah. Cause you never know what life's going to Check right. You, right. Right. So you pay two months penalty and you get out and they can't double charge you. So if they do release it during a two month period, they can't charge you the full two months actually. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's a, a good thing. So anyway, our advice is to buy. <laughs> <laughs> we understand that there's circumstances where people do need to rent. We do. Yes. And, and we've, we've both rented. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. Many times. Yeah. So. And, you know, I wouldn't like my daughter, I encourage her to continue renting. She's nowhere near ready to buy. There's definitely right. times in your life where that makes more sense. And a relocation, sometimes it does make more sense. If you know, like your people do, yeah. that they are buying a new home, they're going to be building. So, and they did, they were smart. They listened because I said, I told them it is so difficult to find a place that will accept the dogs. Um, we found somebody who was an owner who was buying a different home and decided to rent their house out and they have two large dogs. Mm -hmm. So for them, they were like, well, we have two large dogs. Yeah. And luckily Kelly was able to go video it for them because I think I was out of town that day yeah, or something. Were, yeah. yeah. So Kelly videoed it and they did not need a rental until like mid August when they're coming here and they took it for mid July. That was smart. Yeah. yeah. They took it for mid July. A one Get month it while early. you can. <laughs> yep. So they're paying an extra month of rent, but. They have a nice house oh, yeah. that takes the dogs. Yeah. So you have to do what you can. So anyway. All right. That's it for us today, I think. Yeah. We'll see you next time. If see you need to time. get a hold of us, you can email us at hello yeah. at coastalestateteam.com or you can call us at 321-422-2160. And call us, please. Yes. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Cheers. Cheers.